but today we're going to have a look at um, uh, a device that, uh, as it says in the introduction slide, that's um, an asset management tool, but it, it's open um, and it, it is based on Siemens PCS7, but um, don't let that fool you. You don't have to have PCS7. Um, it's a, a real flexible solution. So we'll start off with, you know, looking at a real simplistic view. Um, this is our plant running. Um, the little dots are signifying data uh, traveling into our SCADA, our DCS. I'm, I'm not really bothered what that SCADA or DCS is as long as, as I've got a way of getting onto an open communication protocol. Um, at the moment, the device you're going to see doesn't um, uh, support uh, um, the Rockwell uh, Ethernet IP, um, but if that is going down to a Profibus DP network eventually, uh, or a Profibus PA network, then we can get we can bypass the the Rockwell system completely. So as long as we're on one of those open Profibus or Profinet networks, it doesn't really matter. Um, and what you what you get is your data going into your SCADA, and nine times out of ten, it doesn't matter how intelligent your instrument is. Um, a lot of people only take back the process value because that's what they need to keep production running. Um, the problem occurs when something fails and we have here an electro pneumatic valve positioner so this is a pneumatic valve and actuator that i'm pointing at if that fails and it's likely to fail because it's mechanical um it can be quite critical and it can stop your plant now of course everybody's got a backup and we can run the plant in hand but that's slowing production down and during these difficult times that we find ourselves in, uh, everything is taking a little bit longer to get delivered. Uh, some engineers are, are on furlough, whatever that means. Um, so it's difficult to, to, to get people out quickly to fix these. So we need to get some sort of early indication. And, and this is what the device does. And, and, and PDM maintenance station is, is a solid state PC. Um, and it has three ports on there. So two of them uh, we can use to connect to, to different Profinet networks. Um, but uh, there is a device that allows us that we can plug in called an, an Ethernet to Profibus link, i.e. PB link, um, to get down to Profibus. So, as I said, it's easy when it's a Siemens PLC, uh, but if it's somebody else's, as long as we are supporting these protocols somewhere on our network, we can get access to it. And the other one that it doesn't talk about there, of course, is wireless heart. So if you have a wireless heart gateway and you want some sort of maintenance tool for that, then this can uh, connect to your wireless heart gateway and it can monitor all your wireless heart instruments on plant. So now we have this device monitoring our instruments and you'll see it. I'm not going to do too many slides on it because we're going to we're going to show it to you. But all of the diagnostics from the instruments is being split out acyclically. So, and sometimes this is referred to a second as a second data channel. Um, but with regards to Profibus and Hart, this second data channel has been there you know, for Profibus since 1990 and Hart since 1979. So there's a chance that what you've got on site instrumentation wise is ready to go. Uh, and if you've got the correct network infrastructure in place, then then you're also um, you know, ready to go with, with that side of things. So what we've done now is we've unstranded the intelligent data from the instruments and we've brought it to a box. Um, I won't say it's completely reactive, uh, it, it, but it's not giving you an early indication of faults, but it can. And the way it can do that is it can log those diagnostics. So you'll see changes in your diagnostic values coming from your instruments, and this will make more sense when we start looking at, you know, the valve, the valve position is, is, a, is a really good example of that. And 
because it logs it internally, again, we need to find a way of getting that out. And the best platform really is to send it to a cloud based system, but we can send it to an on premise. So on premise in inverted commas solution. Um, so that's just another PC. But uh, really, the best solution is to send it to the cloud because then you don't have to worry about your, your, your software being upgraded. And and that that the form of that data is is an XML file. So um, if you wanted to, you could just send that to your own cl cloud platform and do something with it. It's you know XML is an open platform, um, but these apps are, are already uh, available. So we, we, we've touched on one previously called Sam IQ, which is the smart asset monitoring app. Um, and today we're going to have a look at another. So all the all the apps are doing um, to simplify it is a lot of the times they're visualizing the data, um, but the plan with the apps is to make them, you know, sort of self aware. Um, I won't say Skynet, oh dear, I have, uh, but um, that's the type of scenario we're getting in. They'll, they'll because they're monitoring over time, they'll be able to make uh, intelligent AI decisions on your mechanical assets. So we, we're going to have a look at the pneumatic valve positioner. Um, uh, and as I said, it's, it's, it's there. Its prime job is you send it a set point, it opens that valve and you can use it for control or modulation. You can also use it to monitor diagnostics. So if you've got an on off valve, you could use the valve positioner on a pneumatic valve just to, to open and close the valve. But what it's doing as well is monitoring the diagnostics of that on off scenario. And what diagnostics can it monitor? Well, the Siemens valve positioner um, can, can manage, monitor quite a lot of stuff. And this is just a, a, an example. Um, mechanical wear, there's quite a, a lot of things that you could be looking at here, depending on what valve you've got. Your zero position is an easy one. Um, you, you'll have some sort of uh, mechanical arrangement um, blocking uh, an opening in the pipe. And uh, if, it's, if that's a linear valve, that will be pushing down into to the valve seat and mechanically over time that can wear. So your zero position will move. If you keep ignoring that, eventually what will happen is that mechanical plunger, if you like, will eventually push through that valve seat and the valve won't close. Um, we also look at things like stiction. So say if you've got um, a ball valve, it might be sticking at certain places uh, and, and you're not seeing that. Apart from when you try and do PID, you're finding that your PID is struggling around certain positions, so the product to your quality might be affected. So it can it can monitor that, and because of the way it works, which you'll see in a minute, um, uh, we can monitor for air leakage. So if we have a have a look at the the PS2, um, it, it it uses a, a Piazzo valve type technology. So when it reaches its set point, it's not trying to open and shut valves continuously to stay at that set point. Um, and there's some examples here for, and this is an independent uh, study that's that's been done. When you look at your compressed air savings, you can have by by using the the, the PS2 um, because it holds that position. Now th that is the important thing. This is looking at the the valve being held at a steady state position. So if the valve is opening and closing constantly, um, there will be a difference, but the difference won't be as much as what you can see in these figures. Uh, and we've got applications within Siemens where we've had customers with free compressors on site. They've standardized on this valve position and they've managed to be able to turn one compressor off. So it's big savings. I'm sorry that everything is in US dollars and euros, but you know, the study was done over in America. So but uh, we can quite easily translate that to the UK. But your emission figures uh, are there. So that's the first thing, it, you know, it, it, it's good for saving your air consumption, but really. Um, just realize something. The, the issue that you, you, you may have is leakage. So you put this this valve positioner in and. Um, if you have a leak, 
you're really defeating the object of it. Just bear with me. I think I haven't shared the 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 sound on on this. Okay, so I've got this this short video. Um, see if it'll play. Siemens, ingenuity for life. So the the addition of the the uh, pressure transmitters in the PS2 is a relatively new thing, um, but again, it's more diagnostics that can be used to to monitor how well you're performing. It's there to help um, give you better control. Uh, over the, the valve when you have got a, a leakage situation. But as you can see, there was a little comment in that video where it says maintenance identified. OK, so that's where somatic PDM uh, comes into to things. So we're going to have a look at the valve app. I'll do the demos all at the end, if that's OK. Um, and as I said, what, what we're trying to do is um, there, there's two, two situations that you'll have with mechanical assets. Um, you either get over cautious and you maintain that valve on a regular basis, strip it down, reassemble it and put it back together. And if anybody's ever done anything where they've stripped something apart, when you put it back together, you've always got that moment where you think, right, I want it to work, fingers crossed. So you can keep doing that. That's not a problem, but that's that's money. Um, and the other situation is you just keep using it and, until it breaks. OK, so we, we, those are the two scenar scenarios on necessary maintenance. So that again, that can lead to high operating costs and unexpected uh, valve failures. And that's just the 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 uh, cost associated with valve. What we're not looking at is a cost associated with plant shutdown. So if you're a power station, um, I can give you an example. I won't name the power station, but they had one valve which was highly critical. And if that valve failed, um, they they the plant would potentially stop and they were paying a maintenance contract on that one valve for uh, for ninety thousand pound a year um, now i know power stations are really critical um and the, the the company that was coming out and testing that valve were, were just moving that valve manually up and down and making sure that it, it moved they weren't doing any advanced diagnostics and the beauty of it is the likelihood is, if you've, especially if you've got a Siemens valve positioner, you've got something on there that's continuously monitoring your valve performance. So as long as you record that and, and action it, you can you can probably stop maintaining all of your valves and, and stretch out your maintenance on your critical valves. Uh, it, it is an app. Um, there is an on-premise version of this developed as I said we you know one of the, the industries we're looking at is power and um, we understand that within the power industry uh, or well, any utilities you know we, we have issues with security but the uh, the cloud version of this app which you'll see in a minute is is hosted on the Siemens MySphere platform and we're not, we're not going to touch on the security of that today um, but that is one of its USBs compared to any other cloud platform. It is highly secure. Um, the, the app itself is designed to be responsive. I haven't tested it on my mobile phone yet, but I've been assured that it works. But definitely on tablets and, and PCs, it's, it's not a problem. How do we get the data? Well, we need somatic PDM. That, that is not just... Um, letting us configure the instruments and maintain them on a day-to-day -day basis. That is acting as an 
edge device for the uh, cloud. And it will be once every hour uploading all of the diagnostics and all of your uh, parameters from your instruments on site. Now you may not want to do that for all of them. You can pick and choose. It's it's freely configurable and those will go into a file location on this somatic PDM or what you can do is you can have a quarantine host and this is can be a very low cost PC. So you have a firewall between your plant bus, which we're you know, we're calling the terminal bus and your your office network, if you like. So that that's your first layer of security and PDM can only push data to one file location on that quarantine PC. This PC can't read anything from PDM, so it's one way communications. Then we have the next layer of security, which is this data security gateway, which is a bit of software from Siemens, which is designed to establish a, a secure VPN, if you like, to the MySphere platform. Uh, you, of course, as a customer would then have your external firewall to go through. So now we have two firewalls. We have a data security gateway and we have the security on MindSphere. So I'm not an expert on security, but I look at that and I, I feel pretty confident that we're going to be OK. Um, the other thing is the PDM uh, maintenance station is built on the same security principles that we have in PCS 7. So um, it was one of the first DCSs on the market to, 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 to get to that uh, security certificate. Um, so we've, we've got ticks all the way along, OK? And really, as I said, I don't really care what PLC, SCADA it is. If we're going down to Profibus, it's really simple. If it's Hart.io, I have to, to, to do some checks, OK? So this quick video of the valve app and then I'll go in and, and, and do it do a demo Siemens, ingenuity for life. So it was either that video or a very badly dubbed one, by the way. So I think that was the better of the two. So I'm hoping you can see this uh, screen here. So this is, this is um, uh, PDM maintenance station. I know it says PCS7 up there, but this is just a standard label. Um, so here in in my man cave, I have a 1500 PLC. Um, and the one thing that uh, uh, PDM maintenance station doesn't do, where what PCS7 maintenance station does, it doesn't look at the diagnostics of the CPU. OK, so if you wanted a, a complete system that did looked at the automation station diagnostics, that would be P PCS7. This um, is purely uh, interested with the field devices and uh, and some other things that I'm going to explain at the moment. So if you're using a Siemens industrial PC, which 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 I am, the, P, the PDM maintenance station comes on a on a, a maintenance state on a PC PC industrial PC. I will get there in the end. Um, you get the diagnostics of that. If you're using intelligent switches, um, Ethernet switches. Uh, so the scalance range from Siemens is an example. Then you can bring those into this layer and the web browsers that you have on those, um, you'll be able to access those from maintenance station and you'll also get the alarms for them. So you can disable Ethernet ports and stuff from 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 here. And if you've got a ring redundancy, um, that's fine. If somebody breaks the cable, well, it will carry on working. But again, you'll get an indication on here that something's wrong. That's important. Then we come down to, to the field level and you can see um, the the errors at the bottom because you can see the the, 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 the different colours. Obviously, red is more critical than yellow, but you also have your um, alarm banner at the top. So I can see I, ha I have an alarm up here on a device. 
and if you use this loop button it will take you straight to where that alarm is on the system and here i have a pro value the first thing you see when you go into this is what we call the electronics label so i can see my serial number and everything else here um, i see the status this is the status it last it last took the measurement um, if i go to this last button here i can see my parameters so the nice thing about this you can see the full part number there so um, and this isn't again online at this precise moment is this is the last time you you you, you did an upload and you can see something here that says edd plus and, and these are special files that you have to have that allow these instruments to talk to the apps okay um and the the newer version of maintenance station that's going to come out next year this is going to be standard for all instruments so the, the thing that i should explain is as i said this is open so it, it, as far as asset management tools go it is one of the most open platforms on the market it, it's over 4500 devices now and that's not just purely instruments that could be io cards style io for instance it could be the simmer code uh, intelligent starters uh, um, and it can be some some uh, drives uh, so as long as we have an edd file we can uh, bring that in and if it's not in our library we can import it uh, and build the library up free of charge. You're not having to pay for these files at a later date. So there's my parameters. And if I go back home, uh, sorry, if you go back home, you'll see a couple of other things here. So we'll start with this diagnostic tab. And what you'll see here um, is, first of all, communication good. So we know that acyclically, uh, the, the instrument is there and then we're, we're starting to see these maintenance alarms and then what what we do at Siemens I can't guarantee for everybody um, we spend a bit of time clearing up this text description so this is an ultrasonic device I've, I've shoved a sock over it uh, with a with a metal plate in it so it doesn't work um, and you can see here we've got a loss of signal um, and then it's saying ensure conditions are correct, no antenna material buildup. OK, um, that error message, when this connects to the cloud, to the SAM IQ app, will be sent to, 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 to that platform. And here it's updating every 10 minutes. These two tick buttons, if I want to, as, if I want to send this to one of the cloud apps, I just select, select this, select for exports, OK? Now, um, I haven't got it on this version, um, but you can see I'm mentioning two apps. So you can send the data in one or two ways. Um, so what you'll have here is groups, and there'll be a group button, and you decide what group you want it to go to, because you might want group one to go to the Sam IQ app and group two to go to the Valve app, yeah? Or you just might want them all to go to one group. So we've actually fought ahead that there may there may be multiple apps that you want to send these to. OK, so that's that. And then um, some just to explain the, the 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 buttons across the top. This is the more approved. So any 107. So you're not buying something that's uh, a Siemens, uh, you know, asset management only tool. It's approved by the more. These buttons here are links to web pages so you can program these up for, for whatever you want. But it does it does use Internet Explorer 11 by default. Um, doesn't support Chrome or, uh, or anything else yet, but you can have some links across there. And then when I click on this button, I can go in and configure the instrument. Now, the good thing about having PDM integrated into maintenance station, just bear with me while you put the password in, um, you can have PDM web enabled. Sorry. Never try to multitask as a man, it's dangerous. And and what does that mean? Well, potentially all of these pages can be web enables. Now, if you go back to a very, very old version of this maintenance station, you could only run it 
completely on the ES. So um, the potential to web enable this and, and, and have it on, on, a, on a thin client is, is there. So these are my parameters. OK, I'll just quickly show you. So you can use this as a configuration tool because sat in the background is the somatic PDM process device manager software where you can go in and do your advanced diagnostics. I haven't got a valve positioner on this setup because I haven't got a compressor in my garage, unfortunately. But uh, if we have a look at some of these, you'll see it's not connected at the moment. But if we have a look at the setup, we have uh, wizards for setting the instruments up. You can see now here, look, it's connected to the uh, instruments and we can go through and configure this instrument with the quick start wizards. Have a, have a look at some of these. You get pictures of, of the different types of vessels and then you get a picture and you have to fill in the, the gap. So it's sort of asking you, you know, you know process questions. You have tools. Um, for for looking at advanced diagnostics. So for, for this one, Echo Profile Utilities will bring up a, a pictorial view of the of the signal that it's seeing on, on the device. Um, and I can also um, uh, set uh, the device that it's checked. So what what I can what I can do is I can put it as a, a as a critical device within maintenance station it's, it's, there's another tick box on another screen so so whenever you get an alarm on that particular critical device it moves up the list uh, it's more important yeah um and with that you can also set um uh, calibration intervals uh, with maintenance station which i'll show in a minute or with pdm they, they both link together so if i have a look at um a couple of things here. I can't remember whether I've got my change log. The first one is change log. So this is uh, uh, you know, uh, traceability. So on here you can see that I've just read the diagnostics. And just before we started, um, I was doing some tests on some other device. You can see here read data insert device. If I change the parameter, it would say on here that I've changed the parameter on that device. So you've got a full change log. Um, we've only got one login on this, but um, uh, PDM maintenance station supports support somatic logon, so it will tie in with your Windows logins if you want, so you can have multiple users. And if you do that, it will say who's made that change to to that particular device. Uh, all your diagnostics is under here as well, which which you can see see on the the other screen. So so really, when you get using it, to be honest, the you know this is a Profibus PA device. The, the file structure is pretty similar across all manufacturers uh, um, and with Siemens devices you, you get the quick start wizards. Okay, um, If I selected a milliamp output device you would have a, a option here to do loop test which is a nice feature so you want to see that you've got the right data going somewhere else um, but with a Profibus device what I can do is simulate so I can simulate the Profibus value so I, I want to make physically sure that on my DCS that that is the right value going to the right tag on my DCS so you can you can do that so it's it's not necessarily called a loop test on Profibus PA um, but it's sort of doing the same thing um, and then if I wanted to I can right lock that device so if I think somebody's been playing I can lo lock it out so you can't uh, edit those parameters on site. But what PDM also does, um, once I've finished programming it with PDM and I've, I click on this download button, I do my, my do, do my setting up, what it will do is it will set something called a configuration flag. If anybody changes something with the push buttons on site, that configuration flag gets on set. PDM sees it straight away and then I will get an alarm that says configuration changed I can come back here because I have my parameters saved and I can do a value comparison so it will compare what's on 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 the device online so PDM sat in the background doing all that for you if I go back to my main screen there's certain filters on here so I'm, I'm used to the newer version so you just have to bear with me because the icons are slightly different so I can do a device status export so anything it's in alarm. I get there in the morning. I can select that and I, I will get a report. Now, what, what I didn't allude to, I can 
um, like I say, set maintenance times and schedules. And you can see here um, that probe LU was failed, but it, I've also, because it's failed, I've put a maintenance request in and I put the maintenance request to say clean. Yeah. So that would um, tie in through the whole of this system. And that is going to stay there until somebody goes in and says, I've completed that work. And again, you can tie it in all with your logins. Um, there's a couple of other buttons up here for, for exports. So um, what you can do with this button here, if I click online parameter um, and this one here, you can see is manual. If I select these conditions, it will go away and scan my network and it will uh, and bring all of the parameters back in the diagnostics for any instruments that have got issues. OK. But what you can do is you can do timed ones of these, and this is where um, PDM comes in. And these are your groups I was talking about, one, two, and three. Um, what you can do is you can say online, and I can say every hour. Every hour, <laughs> I want it to scan the network um, for, for those boxes that I've ticked select for exports. Yeah and it will scan the state of that instrument regardless. And, and the reason I want to do that is because I want to log all of the diagnostics and trend them into an app over time. So if I click on this button now, it will give me a start time. And what we will see here is a little green, uh, but when it starts scanning, so its next scan is due at 11 o'clock, this will go green and you'll get a report here of you know, there'd be nothing in there at the moment. OK, so you'll get a report here of how many it found and how many it, it managed to export successfully. So if it's actually had a problem, it will create a report for you here as well. Um, and that, like I say, remember the presentation goes to the quarantine PC and that quarantine PC once an hour or once every 10 minutes, it doesn't really matter, sends that data off to um, uh, to your app or in this case mind sphere okay so we're going to finish off by having a look at the the app so um first thing i would say this data is not live data it has come from a customer's site um uh, we can't stay live on a customer's site because for obvious reasons but they've given us permission to use this data as long as we don't say who it is um so as you can see here we have um, all of our valves. So this PDM has pushed all of this information up to, um, the, to, the, to the valve app. And all we need to know to get this, this valve app working is where your valves are, work, are. So you can see here location, unit one, unit two. That's, that's purely to, to separate them into different parts of your plan, plant. And then the tag. OK, and as long as we've got that, it will pull the information, the logged information from the PS2 and start putting it into to this app. And, and it's as simple as that. OK, so I can go through all of these. This is showing me all of my my apps, all of my valves. Sorry, um, none, none are managed at the moment. I can click on this button here that says valve detail so I can see an, an anomaly there. Uh, some of these are, are worse than others. That's got two anomalies, two, two. But you can go on to any of these. You can see more data, deviation from KPI valve open, max deviation. So for some reason it couldn't open. Prime example of that, not enough air. Um, uh, so um, if I I can acknowledge any of these if I wanted to, I won't because it's it's a global demo. Um, and if I go on to valve detail, this is where I can now start having a look. So this one um uh, had some uh, maintenance performed on the 16th of, of july um uh, what i can do and look at the, the current information we've got hist histograms here uh, uh, and then more importantly my diagnostic information so you can see here um, this is leakage so we've had some leakage alarms i can overlay those with control deviation to see if i've got any control deviation alarms so i can only do up to to three um, but this is just showing you all of the information that is being pushed up from the valve positioner into this app through pdm maintenance station um, 
What I can do as well, you can see how over here on the right hand side, this might be a critical valve, so I'm going to put it there. Um, so uh, it goes to the top of the list. Uh, I have, it's not got any maintenance planned, so I can see, see here what I want to do so that I might need to, uh, you know, uh, call out a vendor, okay? Um, so, and then it's got the, the actual part number and everything for the PS2. It hasn't got the part number for the valve. You would have to put that in the comments because there's no digital communications to the valve itself. It's just a, a nameplate. So you would have to, to put that onto this device. Um, as part of the app, you can purchase a service agreement. Um, so the clever clever people over in Germany, I think, if you if you want to somebody to analyze this data you know, in more depth, you can click on this service request. As long as you've got a contract, they will analyze that data for you just to give you that extra peace of mind that you're doing the right thing. To be honest, as you start using this, you know, that's a nice to have. Um, so there's my valves. Uh, if I want to, um, I can put this in uh, to a watch list. So I may have a, a, an example. Uh, a terminology is a repeat offender. Um, it keeps, you know, failing. I want to, uh, and then one day it'll be OK. So I'm going to put this into my watch list. Uh, it just brings it to, you know, further to, to, to the top of, of my, of my list okay um so i have my events there my total valves nine in my watch list okay and then over here i have my threshold settings okay so as i said a lot of the stuff is done automatically for you but you may know more about that valve than what the app does in some some uh, situations so what you can do is um if i select all, all of my valves you'll see here um the the deviations yeah so you may be able to to you know live with a, a bigger deviation and um some of this switching cycles change of direction uh, information that's normally sta stamped on the valve or the actuator itself yeah so you might want to fine tune that and so it pulls it in line with the mechanical asset of course the problem is there that if the valve is already installed you haven't got a baseline um, but don't worry too much. You've still got all of the other, you know, intelligent diagnostics. This really isn't what I class as an intelligent diagnostic value. It's just looking at the direction of changes and telling you that's how, how often it's moved. But you can, you know, adhere to the manufacturer specification if you're putting that valve in from you. Everything else is just alarm thresholds um, and you have this for, for e each valve. OK, so. What you can do then um, is put in your planned shutdowns. And that's what these are. Um, and you can see how, over here, no shutdown, none of these are, are planned. And if I click on um, auto optimize, OK, it will move the valves into the plans because it, it's making now an intelligent assumption with the diagnostic values and my threshold settings that if you carry on like this, this valve is going to be in trouble at a certain amount of time. Now you might find, well, if I'm maintaining that valve, that supply is coming out anyway, and this valve over here is the same valve, or you know, this valve here is the same valve, so I'll, I'll pull that one in. They might as well come and do two at once. Yeah, they're, they're here. I'm not paying for two call out. Uh, requests and then you can click on this request for maintenance and what that does that will link this information to a higher uh, system so comos um, is is uh, mro is our maintenance request at all but it could be sap it could be something else so it, it, you can fully automate um, this to, to 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 any of your other calibration or maintenance schedules that you may be already using so um i think that is all i've got to say i hope you heard the music on the video for what it was worth but thank you for listening and